Well, g'day folks. Pretty wet one this weekend. Woke up this morning about 6.30 and it was absolutely pouring rain. And I was about this close and pulling the pin on this trip. Um, but aside to, uh, yeah, coming out here, and, um, but it hasn't stopped raining for the last, yeah, all morning. It's lunchtime now and it just has not stopped. So it's going to be a bit of an interesting weekend, this one. Um, but I think it should be a good one. Where I'm going to, I haven't really been before. Been to this general area, but not to this particular spot. And yeah, it looks like a really beautiful place. Oh, spiderweb. <laughs> but yeah, it's meant to be a really nice canyon down here. And I think a cave I can sleep in as well. So once I get to that cave, it'll be good. and be able to get out of this rain. But in the meantime, I'm going to get absolutely soaked because it just has not let up all day, hey. Um, so I'll try and do my best to do some filming on the way in, but it might be a little bit difficult. But uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Alright, well, I think we're at the canyon now. It's got all these rocky pagodas falling around me. Wow, I don't know if you guys can hear that thunder. She's almost on top of me, so she's had good timing. So let's see if we can go find this cave and try and get some shelter before the, yeah, the storm comes over. But even still, in saying that, it's so bloody beautiful out here in the rain. I'm really enjoying it. This is a similar kind of area to where I went um, with that mountain oasis um, camp when I slept in the cave a couple months back. I just absolutely love this place when it's raining. It's got such a beautiful vibe to it. But in saying that, let's go try and find this cave. Yeah, this is a sick little cave. Oh, I'm so stoked with this. It's a really nice size, like for one people, like one person, or a couple of people. It's a really good size. But uh, also got a nice little stream there as well, so fresh water is going to be easy to get. Yeah, it's a really sick little cave. I'm very stoked with this. It's nice to be able to rain as well. <laughs> I'm absolutely dripping. All right, well, I might uh, put the bag down and have a bite to eat. Man, how cool is all the ferns on the back wall? It's actually a really pretty little cave. We've got a stream that goes on the back as well, although this section is dry, but over there is still running. And uh, there's also another stream down there, so getting fresh water is not going to be an issue, which is good. Uh, I've also got a fire pit there, and luckily we've got some dry timber, which is great. It's actually a pretty good thing to note. If you do a lot of cave camping, um, it's always good camping etiquette to try and leave some timber behind the cave for the next person, because like I have, if you arrive here when it's raining and everything's just soaking wet, this makes life so much easier trying to get that fire started, especially if it's in winter when you get cold. Um, it's just a really good thing to do. So if you do a lot of cave camping, always try and leave some timber behind for the next person.
Man, that is one awesome little cave. I'm very stoked with that for tonight. And that is honestly why I love camping around the sandstone country. The fact that you get to sleep in these, man, that beats a tent any day of the week. Man, it's such a cool landscape around here. So I've got my cave down there. And the area's just filled with these rocky pagodas. With little cracks and canyons in between them. It's a really cool spot. Well, this could be some bush tucker. Kind of looks like a flax lily. You get these along the coast. I've eaten the ones on the coast before, but I haven't had any around here. And the leaves look a little bit different here. They're a bit bigger. But it definitely looks like a flax lily, so... Not too sure about it. I'm not going to try it because I don't know what it is, but... I think it might be some bush tucker. I'll have to check when I get home. Man, bloody hell. If you want to feel small, then come to a place like this. Just everything around here is just like massive in proportion. You could honestly fit a small house in that cave down there. It's such a cool area. Oh, I absolutely love this country around here. You could honestly spend the rest of my life exploring the little nooks and crannies around here. Seriously, the Blue Mountains just has so much to offer. It's such a big area and there's so many different varied terrains. Like, you've got these pagodas, um, you've got just big mountains, rivers, gorges. It's just a, a really gorgeous place. <laughs> it's, it's a really epic place. I could honestly spend the rest of my life, my life exploring around here. And the fact that it's only an hour or two away from Sydney, man, it's pretty hard to beat. But uh, yeah, this is a canyon down here. So I think I might go down and have a little stroll through here. Apparently it gets quite narrow just around the corner there. And um, so I'll go check that out. The only thing with canyons, especially with rain, is yeah, kind of have that risk of flash flooding, but I think I might be right here, but it's definitely a very serious risk. Like a lot of people die canyoning um, in the Blue Mountains each year, so you really gotta be careful, but I'll go down and scope it out. If it's uh, a bit sketchy today, then I might save it for tomorrow. Like I'm in a little fern gully. It's all around me. Just ferns and big rocky monoliths. It's pretty cool in here.
far out, this place is crazy. This is really cool. It's like a green cathedral in here. What a place, eh? I was just going through that little green cathedral tunnel just then. Just popped out and boom, this massive amphitheater full of huge tree ferns. What an incredible place, eh? Wow. Man, get a load of that backdrop. That is something special. This is a really cool place. These eucalypts here are just massive and just surrounded by this little rocky canyon. Tree ferns and other ferns just everywhere. It's a very special place, feels very prehistoric here. I'm going through that little canyon or that little tunnel just then and that was pretty cool. But to be honest, I was actually getting a little bit sketched out because it's about 5.30 now, so it's getting a little bit late. And um, yeah, I'm just so cautious of this rain. I feel like it's gonna pour down any second and been in that canyon, if that got a flash flood, I would have been toast. So I decided to come out. Um, we're like, I'm kind of at the end of the canyon now anyway, but I've just um, come up this little hill here and I'm hoping I can sort of maybe go back along this ridge rather than going back through the creek. But yeah, maybe I kind of wish I left this spot till tomorrow because I feel like I've kind of rushed it, but at the same time, <laughs> I'm absolutely loving it too. So no complaints here. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can make our way back before this uh, rain gets any worse. Well, I think that was a good idea to come back when I did because we've got the rain moving in now. And we're just back at the cave, so let's go down and get the fire started. Just trying to find some semi-dry wood to get the fire started. This doesn't seem too bad because obviously it's still standing, it's not laying on the ground getting soaked. So I think I should be able to get it started with this. I'm just using my silky gombo. All right, so we're doing pretty basic tonight. So just uh, sleeping on the ground like this. Just got my ground sheet, my Nemo Tensla insulated mat. Got my Cedar Summit Ember 3 quilt in my bag, which I pull out just before I go to bed. And um, yeah, that'll be me for tonight. 
I do have my outdoor research helium BV, so if I find the insects are too bad or there's lots of spiders or something, then I might get that out and sleep inside that. But ideally, this is the way I prefer to camp. Yeah, like I've said this before, but cave camping, in my opinion, nothing beats it. It's hands down my favorite way to camp. Just sleeping on the ground like this, just looking up at the cave walls as the fires are lighting it up. And if you get a nice clear night when you get the stars and the full moon, just as you're falling asleep, just looking out over the stars, it's honestly nothing beats it. It's the best way to camp. And if you guys ever get a chance to um, camp in a cave, I would highly recommend it. Definitely beats sleeping in a tent in my opinion. Um, but on that note, it's probably about 6.30 now, so I might crack open a gin and tonic, we'll get the fire started, and we'll cook up some tucker pretty soon. I just got my own Bushman from Corn Off and Tool. So dinner time. So tonight I'm going to cook up a pearl couscous with charcoal vegetables, uh, some beef strips coated in tuca, and yeah, that's about it. So let's um, get it going. So I'm actually, rather than cooking on that tonight, I actually just got this the other day. Um, it's a new jet boil stash and super lightweight. It's pretty small, so I thought I'd bring it out and um, give it a bit of a test run. Obviously, I love cooking on the fire, but Sometimes it's just nice and easy to <laughs> cook up on a little gas stove, so pretty can test it out. It's really nice and lightweight as well. I think it weighs like maybe 400 grams or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but it's um, yeah, pretty, pretty light. So there's the burner. So the arms just fold in, you just slide them around. You've got a nice little jet. All right, so as for the veggies, we've just got some pumpkin, some carrot, and some red onion. Just get some oil on that. And I'll also just add some rock and spice. So just coat all the veggies in that. And that is a serious jet on that thing. So we're gonna see how this pan goes, cooking over this flame. If it doesn't do too well, then I'll chuck in the fire, but I'd like to try down this first. All right, they're almost cooked, so I'm gonna take that off now. Yeah, so we've just got beef strips in here. And then, I'll add some duca. Maybe a bit of oil as well. Now, this is the first time I've cooked this meal before, so very keen to see how it tastes. It already smells bloody delicious, eh? Anything with duca or like Moroccan spice always tastes the best. In another life, I easily could have been a <laughs> Middle Eastern, eh? I absolutely love Middle Eastern food. All right, so they're nicely coated. So now we'll get that back on the, the flame. Now 
Man, that is smelling so good already. All right, well, I think that's about done now, so I'll take that off. Well, guys, I'm sorry about the footage, but I've got some fog inside the lens again. So it's taking ages to sort of disappear. So just bear with me and hopefully we'll um, clear up pretty soon. I'm just gonna yeah, get the pearl couscous on. It's got the pearl couscous here. And I'll probably add about, oh, maybe about 400 mils of water. All right, now we're at the pole couscous. Yep, I think that's done now. So we'll take that off. Now I might just uh, heat up the veggies in the steak here because they've probably gone a little bit cold. All right, so what I might do, I might actually put this into the bowl, mix it all around, and then I'll transfer it back into the plate. All right, now just to finish it off, I've just got some dill here. So I'm just gonna pick off the leaves of that. I'm just going to roughly chop that up. And then just inside this little Nalgene bottle, I've just got a creamy garlic dressing. So I'm just going to add the dill to that. Ideally, if you've got a bowl, it'd be nice to mix this in the bowl, but I'm kind of lacking a few things here, so I think this will do. I'm just going to put it in there. And also, ideally, um, it's best to use Greek yogurt for this, but still a bit skeptical about hiking Greek yogurt into the bush, so this will do. And just give that a little stir around. And we'll just pull that over it. I'm very keen for this. This looks pretty damn good. Mm, yum. Wow, that's actually really tasty. That is really damn tasty. Mmm. Wasn't sure about that creamy dressing. That actually works pretty well with it. That's meant for salads, but um, it actually works really well with this. I reckon a little bit of maybe feta mixed through it would actually be really good as well. Man, for a meal cooked down the bush, you cannot complain of this. This is really good. Mm. But on that note, let's uh, wrap it up here. I'm gonna finish off my tasty dinner. Enjoy my gin and tonic. And uh, watch a bit of the bush telly. So I'll see you guys at a nice night tomorrow morning.
Well, that was pretty cool. Just had a couple of yellowtail black cockatoos come and visit me. It's quite nice. I uh, absolutely love yellowtail black cockatoos. They're a really cool bird. They've got a really nice call to them. It was um, yeah, nice to see because I haven't really seen too many birds this trip. Heard a couple of kookaburras yesterday. And there's a few little wrens flying around, but not too many. And uh, this area did get pretty badly affected in the fires last year. So I'm thinking maybe a lot of the birds have sort of moved on until um, a lot of the plants start to regrow. But yeah, anyway, it's about nine o'clock. Um, it's probably about time to start packing up camp. I'm sort of just sitting around here, just enjoying the place, and I really like it. It's probably easily one of my favorite camping caves I've been to. It's a really good one. It's perfect size, and it's just a really beautiful outlook as well. I really like it here. But um, yeah, in saying that, let's uh, pack camp up, and we'll start making our way out of here. Does not get much pressure than that. That is crystal clear and honestly tastes better than the water at home. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about sterilizing or filtering it in this circumstance. This catchment here is about as pristine as you're gonna get, so I think um, this will do me just fine. If I do get sick, I'll make sure to let you guys know. Man, this place is insane, eh? It is such a cool landscape. It feels uh, very ancient out here. It's almost like a place that time forgot. But honestly, I spend the rest of my life just exploring this, um, this country around here. It's just a really interesting country, and it's just so many nooks and crannies to explore. Oh, definitely won't be the last time I come back to this area. All right, guys, well, I think that's a wrap for this one. I just want to say a big thanks to all you guys watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I've had a really nice time. Considering it wasn't even going to come out yesterday um, with the rain, I'm so glad I did because it's actually been a really nice weekend. The rain honestly adds such a cool element in this landscape. It's just 
yeah, makes it a very magical place. And it's, um, so hopefully I've done a bit of justice in the camera. So yeah, I just want to say a big thanks again, um, especially you guys to sign up for my Patreon. I really appreciate all your support, and I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Hooroo.